Since the beginnings of recorded history in China, as in ancient cultures worldwide, man has held a high reverence for the natural world around him. Chinese artists dotted huge panoramic landscapes with tiny, almost insignificant human figures to demonstrate this fact. The Chinese also admired the animal kingdom, both factual and mythical, for the way the beasts seem to instinctively merge so naturally with their environment. The drama of predator and prey was observed and studied by warrior priests living in mountain sanctuaries. On past episodes of Kung Fu for Health and Self-Defense, we've showcased the famous five animal system of Shaolin, the snake, tiger, dragon, crane, and leopard. One almost inconspicuous animal has inspired a fighting art considered especially swift and devastating. The northern praying mantis system is represented here tonight by my guest and good friend, Manuel Marquez. Good to have you, Manuel. Thank you very much. Praying mantis is a style that martial artists might consider a specialty. A teacher may want you to get a foundation in other systems first. You yourself have a broad range of experience in the martial arts. Could you give us your own personal background? Well, I started at the age of 12 years old, and from that, I developed uh, Taekwondo thanks to the old Motokwan and got my belts of black in there. After teaching that style for a period of time, I decided that I needed to further myself in my training and I started Kung Fu training. Under the toolage of Sifu Cam or Master Cam Yin that did the choreographing for the Kung Fu series on TV, I learned Northern Shaolin and Northern Praying Manus. And he helped me an awful lot. And with the, my other teacher, Sifu Steve Ball, who taught me the guidelines and the traditional ways of the Northern Praying Manus and, and Shaolin, there I succeeded in learning all their ways. But through that time in training, I went to a different teacher, Sifu Richard Vera. He taught me Southern Five Animals from R.Q. Wong style and Five Families, which I did go for a period of a time and did get to a certain rank, but not finished. Later on, I did learn the 36th Thin Tao Qigong method of, from Master John D. Lo, which is from the Chinese National Qigong Institute. And there, here, I progressed and got further and, and started doing iron palm training. I learned from Bob Dilks, who taught me the Seven Star Praying Mantis System, and Fuji Pai Black Tiger Praying Mantis System, which is a hard and soft style of iron palm. And then Sifu Richard Vera taught me the Arc Q Wong style of Southern Five Animals of his iron palm. The Chinese believe in keeping alive their traditions, Kung Fu being a proud part of that heritage. What are the origins of the praying mana system? Well, there's, uh, there's a lot of things that they first started out. It started 350 years ago in the Shatung province of China in the northern part. And there, well, Master Wang Long, or the founder, developed this system. But before he even started, he was a master in Tian Sao style of Kung Fu, and he was a uh, excellent swordsman besides that. Through his training though, he wanted to further himself, so he went to the Mount Songsheng Temple and went there to develop his art. But later on, he wanted to further himself, so he decided to fight with the monk. But later on, after he was fighting, he realized he was getting whipped from the lower monks, so he developed another system of praying mass, or the Tai Chi praying mass Dong Long, which is the bug insect of itself. He noticed the, the fighting of this praying mantis against the cicada was definitely in the way it was moving with his hands and feet. It was very unique in his style, so he developed that into his own style and went back to the temple to fight the system. And, in the, in the, and he, when he fought the rank of the monks, he went up to the abbot and he lost, but he, that was the only one that could not defeat him. And uh, even the lowliest servants, it said, of Shaolin Temple were awesome fighters, so to reach the rank of the monk to fight that far through the ranks, that was quite an achievement in itself. Yeah, it was. Because the abbot was supposed to be like the elite of all of them. On top of that, Mount Songsheng had the most elite of all Wushu field of practitioners. Mm -hmm. uh, praying mantis movements are quite different and unorthodox compared to classical Shaolin. So what are the characteristics of the mantis? Well, the characteristics is the fancy footwork that it has. It has unique hand skills and changeable movements of inner and outer body arrangement. So through that time, it has a most intricate of feet for the monkey and ape that it has. This system is very unique, though, because of the way it is being trained. It is always in a, a, the balancing and repetitious movement of the praying mantis in itself. Uh, people who don't practice the martial arts, they're often very surprised when they find out that there are dozens and dozens of different kinds of kung fu. What are the major branches of praying mantis? Well, there's different styles of praying mantis. There's the soft style and hard style of all Kung Fu systems. The first of all is the soft style, it's the Tai Chi praying mantis. There's a smooth board praying mantis, the hand fling praying mantis, 
the wall and praying mantis, and the foam fire praying mantis. The seven star praying mantis system is soft and hard. It does have its hard moments, but the other ones is six link, eight step, and Wutong praying mantis. Let's see. People who join your torrent school have the added advantage of learning northern Shaolin along with mantis. What are the advantages that, that you feel that uh, learning two styles in conjunction with, with each other has for a practitioner? Well, I, I've, I've found out that if you learn a system that has just long movements, it's, you learn the extension of your body, but you don't know that inner feeling of short movements. So together with the northern Shaolin is long and the, and the northern praying mountains, which is short in itself, to develop both those, which is good, because it teaches you all around it into a well-rounded and complex system. I see. Uh, one of the main factors that separates Kung Fu from regular street fighting is its emphasis on mental as well as physical training. So what type of mental preparation is part of the praying mantis regime? Well, in the praying mantis system, we have seven fillings that we usually do. These fillings is just not having the praying mantis hands, but the body, mind, and spirit of other things. First, we start off with one, the spirit. The spirit must be like that of an eagle, swooping down as prey. Posture must be like that of a cat, ready to pounce on a mounts. Three, the waist must be like a dragon, strong and sinuous. Four, the arms must be like that of a tiger, strong and deadly. Five, the footwork must be like that of a monkey, quick and efficient. F six, your heart must be like that of a fox, cunning. But most of all, the hands must be like that of the praying mantis. All right, that's very good. Also, uh, many people are fooled when they see praying mantis movements. A lot of the, the finger, fingering action, they think, well, geez, in a real fight, don't you use your fist? So could you explain maybe the way the hands are trained, the fingers are trained in praying mantis? Well, we develop different ways of training the hands for the plucking, sucking, nestling, and uh, breaking moves. We have bag training, rope training, stick training, and knife training to develop the flowing motion of the hands. Because the praying mantis is almost like a natural instinct. When people point at things, they point this way. And instead of uh, being able to, and if you notice, that way is the way of the praying mantis, of the hands. Oh, that's interesting. No matter what the Kung Fu system, a set curriculum is common to most schools. Basic training, solo forms, and application. And now Manuel, with the help of his students, will both inform and entertain you with movements of the northern praying mantis system. In the praying mantis system, you have the basic internal breathing sets that we start off with, just like most of the other styles. We're going to start off with my student here, Tony Alvarez, with the single hand internal breathing set first. You inhale. Exhale. Inhale. Exhale. Inhale. Exhale. Inhale. Exhale. Okay. These are, that's one of the basic sets, but there's several other ones, but we're gonna go over that right now. But we're gonna start off the basic hands of the 12 script characters. And here we're gonna have Moraine Sneed and Tom, Tony Alvarez win this. Here, we're going to have the first one, Wu, which is a basic pull motion with the three fingers. This motion is with the striking and holding of the joints and striking at the face, hand, the body, and the upper body. Here we're going to show the application of the three finger grab. Okay, now we're going to show it a little bit faster speed now. Okay. The second character, which is Lu, the five-finger grab, or eagle claw, managed. 
With that, you start off with the grab motion. And here we're showing this technique of the five finger grab. Holding and pulling of the opponent and striking with the upper arm, the back fist, the claw, or the mattis. Okay, they're going to show the application of blue, the five finger grab now. Okay, the third strip character is facility, which is the plucking or sucking motion of the prey mattis hand. It's the motion with all fingers, a combination of loop and loop together, jerking and plucking the body, going to and fold, side to side, up and down. Okay, now the application of the slip. Okay. Okay, now the mantis arms. In the mantis, we have the development of the hands to the elbows and the shoulders. Okay, here, we're going to do basic arm rolls, starting to the left. The motion of rolling the body. Okay, now we're going to do the application of that. Okay, now we're going to do the arm development of blocking and punching with the arms. Okay, here Reggie Gonzalez and Al Simmons does the development of the arms, the back arms, and of leg work, developing the upper and lower arms of all parts. Okay, now we're going to do stances, okay, these stances start off with the basic horse or mobo stance of the crane mountains. Here you can utilize different opponents from this stance and going to the left side of the tenji bowl or the right side. Here you can move side by side going from one direction to another, okay. And from there, you got the horse, and that, which can go into the cat or toe stand. Okay? From here, you can go from movement to movement, being able to be, have the ability to strike the opponent. Okay? Then we got the monkey stand, which is a quick, erratic feat. Being able to bounce around. Now we have the seven star crane on. Okay, here's the elbow, striking, hooking with the toe to use it as a block or throw. Okay. Okay, now we have the basic power lines. Let me go from here. Okay, these power lines are used so that you can use the strength and fluidity of the arms, the motion, and the legs. Being able to go in a one long straight portion with the feet and hands in one swift movement. Okay, here. We start off with the basic one from the seven star crane and minus one, which is the elbow. seven star system which is a kicking power line okay from here we go into the different styles of seven star praying mantis tai chi praying mantis and pump power now the tai chi
Okay, now the most advanced one is the pump power system. Here we're going to do the first of the frame matter system forms, which is from Bill Kleinberg doing the small cross. My name is Bill Kleinberg, and I'd like to do a form of Monkey Steals the Peach for you. It's from the Tai Chi Frame Mantis system. And I apologize, I'll have to turn my back for a second. Thank you. Uh, I'd like to do a form called piercing hand or spear hand. It is a, a seven star praying mantis form. It is characterized by the uh, spear hand punch near the middle of the form. Um, also, it is characterized by a, a seven star application, seven star stance applications, and the uh, typical uh, mantis uh, grappling and hooking techniques. I'd like to do form from the bumbo, called bumbo from the uh, Tai Chi, Northern Tai Chi system. It means just erratic feet, um, just a lot of jumping around and moving. Thank you. And now we're going to have the advanced form of plum flower. Okay, now we're going to do cheese out. Okay, here this is the basic sticky hands for the pre mana system.
we're going to have a woman here named Maureen Sneed doing the technique with Alan for Tony. This is a basic grab. She's using a twin power system for the attack. Okay, in fast motion. Okay, now the throat grab. The striking motion of up and down the body, rolling the shoulders over. Okay, now a china grab for arm lock. Breaking with the tsui or plucking motion. Thank you. Okay, now we have a typical light street fighter going against some of the other ones. Okay, now okay, in a different way. Okay, now with the knife attack. Slow motion. Blocking. Blocking up. Hitting the body, hitting the face. Turning the arms. Going in the arm. Okay. On a different angle. Okay. Fast. And now see we ran over some of the things and this is just the basic stuff of the Praying Mantis. There's a lot more advanced stuff than this. But here we covered the arms, the leg work, and different techniques so that we can use and know the utilization of this complex and well-rounded system. Thank you very much. With all the different kinds of martial arts available to the public today, it's difficult for a person to decide which one is best suited for himself. What do you feel that the Chinese martial arts have for women specifically? Well, I noticed through all taking the karate and kung fu that the fluidity of the movements against it hard is so much easier for the women because, for one, their physiques are not as strong as a man, so they would have to be going against the grain if they learned in a harder style. On kung fu, it teaches you the gracefulness, the fluidity of the motion, being able to pull your opponent down and using his own punch. And from there, I think that the women can really adapt to it because of, of the movements, for one, anyways. It was a very famous Wing Chun master, which was a lady. And uh, she developed a very uh, disarming and uh, very strong system in Wing Chun. And from there, Wu Mei did develop a, a very powerful system. And from there, it branched off to some of the other Kung Fu styles on top of that. Maybe Marina would like to add something to that. Well, I think that all women should take some type of self-defense. You never know when you're going to be in the wrong place at the wrong time. Your car breaks down, what have you. Unexpected situations happen. I think that the Chinese martial arts kung fu is best suited to the women for exactly what Manuel said, because you're taking that man's power, no matter how big or small, and using it against himself, and just by getting out of the way and using your own power. In 20th century man's quest to control and tap the Earth's resources, He's already succeeded in destroying many of nature's gifts. He forgets that we humans are forever bound to the air, water, and earth around us for our survival physically. Spiritually, we are taking from and not returning to those very sources that gave us life. Maybe if modern man can recapture the respect and reverence that ancient man had for his universe, we could once again live in harmony with life on this planet. I want to thank Manuel and all of his students for demonstrating and representing Prey Master tonight. I think that they've also showed us the natural talent and personality that is characteristic of this unique Kung Fu style. In closing, I'd like to once again invite all the viewers to the Fernandulus Martial Arts Expo on Saturday, May 14th at 1 a.m. in the afternoon, 1 p.m. in the afternoon. All the major martial arts will be represented there. Many of the guests have been on the show. The address is 8851 Laurel Canyon Boulevard near Sheldon in Sun Valley. The admission is free. We hope to see you all there. And now our final salutation to you. Are you ready?